Uh, I just define grief and wonder as, uh, well, by their space. They both need space to happen. I've, I've noticed with my own um, state of grief that it, it was uh, demanding and um, that it was always in the background about to come forward. And it's like being underwater, you know, where it de demands that everything above the surface no longer is making any sound to distract you. It's just the water. And then it'll hold you down for as long as you can stand it until you swim to the surface again. It's like a bubble. And all of a sudden you're in that bubble, you know, and every, everything kind of fades away and everything's on the outside of the bubble so you can be with it. And, and it happens anywhere, but it's like, I don't know if you've ever had a firework off near your ear, but it sounds like a ringing sort of sound and you can't hear anything else but like the sound of your own heart beating where it's like boom, 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 boom. And it's like <laughs> it's like that but like with grief you're all, all of a sudden you're triggered and you're in your bubble you may be driving or you may be spending time with somebody you really love and then all of a sudden it just comes up and then they that space just demands that you get in it But wonder seems to be more of a, you have to get yourself ready and prepare your heart and keep your heart open. And then you can, and then you run into it. Boom. You're like, oh, I'm in space. <laughs> this wonderful space with this cup of coffee or like this wonderful sunset or like somebody's face that you adore, you know, and you're like, oh, you know, and your heart just kind of cracks open and it needs space. And you have it, or a great idea, or a song, or a memory, you know? Um, in, my, in my case, I had to grieve my marriage. And when, before I knew it was over, it was over. So I had been carrying around basically the shell of it, because I didn't want to really believe that it was over and that's kind of what I think the rocks are for me is me carrying everything I loved about my marriage and then when it wasn't real they were just heavy so the things that lifted my heart were just a burden and one night I walked probably I'd say eight and a half miles <laughs> And I was angry and yelling two o'clock in the morning. And until I was done yelling. And then I was mourning and crying until I just got done crying. And then I was with my thoughts and my thoughts just got boring and I still had four miles to go. And it was a beautiful night. So all the time when I was yelling and crying and trying to negotiate with myself, I had to let go. And then I could I experienced myself underneath these stars. And it was like, it was like a hit of light, of energy. And I'm like, I'm alive. I could feel myself being alive. But under all that weight, it was just, I couldn't feel my own life. So I had to give it up.
I think about a month after my divorce, or, or a month after the end of that relationship, um, we had a great flood that was in 2013 here. And um, I was, I escaped the house with my daughter Prue. Um, but it was a, the, so it was a, it was devastation kind of, as a friend of mine said on um, Jobian levels, you know, like Job, <laughs> um, because I lost not only my family, but I lost my home which was my last respite. <laughs> um, and uh, then the next five or six years was really a matter of trying to maintain uh, a stable environment for my daughter and um, to kind of rebuild everything and, and kind of survive <laughs> what had happened. And so... Um, when you say, you know, what is grief to me, I think a lot of that is probably, in this case, you know, grief is actually a response to an event or to a trauma in your life. Um, and I was in a place where I felt like I had to be strong to to maintain my my work and and uh, a stable environment for my daughter. So a lot of that grief ended up being just kind of put away. Um, so here it is, you know, five, six years later, and um, I was finding, I was wanting to do something else with my creativity, with my music. And um, probably to step back from that, one of the ways that I started healing myself was I just started walking. And um, it was suggested to me that I get into my ethnicity at that point, which is basically Irish. And so I would listen to Irish music and go on long walks. Um, just right out into the mountains from here. And um, I got to where it went from a half an hour out and a half an hour back to um, two or three hours out and three hours back. And um, It wasn't really, it, it quickly moved from despair to just a, to something that really fed me and made me happy <laughs> on all levels, you know. Um, I just preferred being out into the, in the wilderness. I, in a lot of ways, I always have. Um, but that's where I would, just through the pace of walking in the woods, would begin to work out whatever was happening in my life. And it was something I was listening to um, and the phrase that the that the person that was speaking used was, "If we are of noble heart," and it stuck. And as I was on this walk up this very steep hill, um, the thought thing came to me that I should put together a collection of pieces called entitled "Songs for a Noble Heart." And um, so I immediately started thinking of the names of the songs in that collection, and um, Walking with Angels was the best one. And um, part of that was, was as I was hiking up this mountain, I had my trail spikes on, and there were tall drifts of snow, but they were frozen so that you could walk on top of them. So it just, the feeling of walking on top of snow drifts on the top of this mountain in the wind, that phrase just came to me of walking with angels. But really, it's more the feeling that I get when I'm in the wilderness. It's it's um, not necessarily deeply spiritual, but it, it, it I guess angels is in in some ways. But it's just a meditative 
other dimensional feeling when I'm out there. Because when I decided to to write something, it, it, I had this one particular picture in mind, a photograph that I had taken, and and the entire song was just based on that. It was of a frozen lake with a sunbeam coming down onto the frozen water. And um, I knew that there were a collection of photos that I had that, that were exactly in that same feeling. When I finished, I think the I, I changed one simple chord. It was kind of the uh, kind of this suspension chord right in the middle of the song. But everything else was exactly the way I'd played it the first time through. And uh, there's this pulse that goes throughout the piece. And I didn't know it at the time, but I I went after I recorded the piece, I would go out into the woods and sometimes I would pull that piece up to listen to it as I was walking and I noticed that it was ex the exact pace that I walked and that seems to be the way I create so many things is um, my mind works within the pace that I'm walking. You have a question? Ask your question. How are we going to be on stage? <laughs> right now we're talking about It's the, like you're going to be on the concept of the yeah. film. You know how you watch movies? You be on making a movie. It's kind of like a stage. It has a very theatrical feel. Wait, are we going to be in there? Yeah, yeah, that's what she was filming all day. And right now she's recording our voices. Cuz she's wanting to hear what we think about grief and wonder. Grief to me is when your heart is broken in a million pieces. And wonder is sometimes when you can put it all back together and it's sort of an amazing process. To me, grief is a series of negative things that just like bring you down and wonder can fix all that. They can put you back up again. So I think there's a, a deep hole that 
gets opened up inside when you have grief. And there in the moment, there feels like there's nothing that could possibly fill it. And I think there's lots of things that people and that I have tried to fill that hole in any attempt to feel better and to cope with that kind of loss. I think the wonder, I think of wonder in two different ways. I think of wonder as like a questioning, like I wonder if or I wonder why. There's that kind of wonder, uh, which can be a, a black hole circle that doesn't um, necessarily help and can really keep you in a space of loss. Um, but then the other side of the word wonder, I think, comes in those unexpected moments when you experience an ounce of levity, or maybe it's an ocean-sized, you know, tidal wave of levity that releases you from the ache of that hole. And hopefully the intensity over time can be lessened by the the wonders that land upon you. I don't think they can be fabricated. I don't think you can create it. I think they are unexplainable, precious gifts from whatever entity exists that is bigger than us. Yeah, I think grief has so many different colors and it's different for everybody. I'm learning about it and how it's something that just really is intangible and it fluctuates and it's transformational, which is where the wonder comes in. Most people I talk to will describe their experience of grief and that pain that has both weighed them down and given them a new way to see the world and shaped who they are and given them such a resilience and strength. Everyone here that I am sit standing, sitting with right now is wonderful in every single way. <laughs> we need these people in our lives to just be there for us and just lead us through life. And yeah. Can you describe a time when someone in this circle was there for you? Well, when I just felt, when I felt really sad one time, I don't remember when it was. Darby just came up, came up and helped me. She comforted me, and it was just really heartwarming. Lottie was there for me when Aunt Trudy passed away a couple months ago. I got the text message that a cousin of mine had passed, and Lottie came into the room and saw me crying, and she came over and gave me a big hug, and patted my back, and said, it's going to be okay, Mom. Mom, no, you were there for me. And then you said, if you need me, I'll be in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I remember a time when both of my girls were there for me. I was having a phone conversation, and I was sad. And you remember that? Yep. It was kind of recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was having the girls stay out of my bedroom so that I could have a private conversation. And... Riley has a sixth sense and she always knows when I'm feeling something. And so she was curious and I came out and both girls had like, they were just sitting on the couch and they were just kind of waiting and looking. And I explained to them everything that I was feeling. And I just told them that I didn't, I didn't ever want them to be scared of sadness. I didn't want them to be scared of my sadness. I didn't want them to be scared if they had their own sadness and that we always could be with each other. And we just puppy piled on the couch for about an hour afterwards and Riley was crying with me, but she understood that it was safe to... I didn't have to worry. It, talk, yeah. it um, talked about um, daddy. Mm -hmm. And he and then mommy said um, he um, is so nice. Mm -hmm. And um, also um, he talked and and then mommy talked with him. Mm -hmm. And then and then while they talked is um, and then I 
didn't know mommy was crying, mm -hmm. so that's why I just did it. So you girls sat on either side of me and we just kind of held each other until, until we the feelings better. passed, until we just, and then I think we danced around the kitchen. <laughs> we did. Like you do. These two women have held me. Danielle for almost 20 years through growing up and dating and New York City <laughs> and figuring out our lives and our careers. And then now uh, building families and refiguring out love <laughs> and lives <laughs> and careers. And uh, Shannon, though, I've known her about half that time. I feel like actually carried me through maybe the hardest time. <laughs> Talk about wonder. <laughs> oh, I feel like uh, one of the gifts that I have been given so gloriously always has been my girlfriends. And I can say definitively, it is likely the greatest gift of my life. Because without them, I don't know how I get anywhere else, have gotten anywhere else. <laughs> I have been held, I have been so beautifully <clears throat> held, and I have been so beautifully let go at the right times, also. To be in this community for all of you, um, it's just been such a gift and a learning process and a challenge, and, and to learn to trust, and, and just you especially, Piper, just like when we first started doing private dance lessons and just, it just was such a shift for me because the way that you believed in me and helped me to start believing in myself. Hey Lottie, why do you like riding horses? Oh. Um, Cause it, um, I like, it gives me a chance to be who I am and um, learn new stuff. I have two horses. You have two horses? Do you love them? I bet they love you. I actually have three horses. You have three horses? Because mm -hmm. one of them passed away, so I got a new one. Okay. Did you feel grief then when a horse passed away? Yes, you did. How did you feel? Sad. Yeah. Did you cry? Yeah. A little bit, huh? What made you feel better? Um, the next time I came to riding and um, when I got a different horse to replace the horse that died. Mm -hmm. Do you miss the one that died? Yeah. Yeah. What was its name? Diva. Diva. Oh, I love that. that. We all it's feel the loss of it. <laughs> Being a mom to you three is... Like we can't, we don't even, I don't even have words of how much wonder you three provide. Talk about the circle of life though, between mm -hmm. grief and wonder, like losing loved ones yeah. that have raised us and then the wonder of bringing oh new this life into the world. Totally. Like the first time you look at your child. I know. I, I will never forget that, for her first cry. Me neither. Like, it's so weird because I was in such like la la land of what felt just a minute, baby, just a minute of like what felt like trauma. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd been through this long labor trying to do a natural birth, and then it was borderline emergency C section, and same, you know, and like I was so exhausted. I'd been up for over twenty four hours straight pushing, and like yeah, same. you're just so out of your mind, exhausted, trying to help bring these lives into the world, and then it, it's like the first unselfish moment of my life <laughs> maybe the only unselfish moment of my life you know what I mean when you when you really figure out like oh it is not like I have this deep deep responsibility 
in this extension of my humanity. It's almost like a grief of what your life was. Totally. Oh yeah. Uh, a moment of that. Uh, totally. Before you can accept that now you're responsible for this for, new life. For this new person. So, on stage, is there like going to be a storm? 